Assalamu alaikum guys, you're listening to Mind Heist with Aki Twi and Amin. In this episode we discussed Muslim media man, uh, ranging from social media to YouTube to all that jazz, even TV and uh, news articles. Anyway, it's a good episode, I enjoyed doing it and inshallah many more to come. So enjoy the episode. You start it man because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's your boy. It's your boy Aki Tweet. I'm going to go with Aki Tweet because, you know, keep it a little bit anonymous for now. Because that's what you're famous for as well. Oh, please. Uh, and you are, what are you going by today? What are you going by these days? I'm just Amin, man. I'm Did Amin, you? which who might be known from Sira Masters YouTube channel and everything. MashaAllah. You were a mean outspoken on Twitter, but yeah, w- what happened? You quit, didn't you? Yeah, those days are gone. I think I quit over a year ago now. Yeah. So, Any I'm main reason? Um, you know what? Uh, I, I would say time, but really it was just uh, too many uh, opinions there that I didn't want coming into my head. Um, Even if you uh, unfollow people? Well, the thing is, yeah. Even someone that I respect and look up to, like yourself, oh, wow. if you're just going to put something irrelevant there, maybe yeah. I want it in my head, maybe I don't want it in my head. Maybe I don't even want my own thoughts in my head, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. um, so for example, if you're going to put opinions in, in your head, then yeah. they should be from like qualified people, right? Like wh- whether you're talking about flipping cooking, mm. or you're talking about, uh, I don't know, a fatwa or anything, you want to go to people who know what they're talking about. So. That was like the main reason, like just to filter what is coming into my head more. Yeah. But How's Twitter these days, though? I, I don't know. It's different. It's, uh, it's not the same as it was before. Well, oh, that's the thing. Like, I made a conscious decision a long time ago to um, mm. like, not follow any women, mm. um, which obviously the, the, there's, Dean, there's Dean reasons for that. And there's obviously, uh, what's the word? Uh, your your wife will get a, feel a certain type of way, you know. So, that's cool. but that's not a problem. So I did that, and since then it's been very like you. The people I follow are all boys, but all the boys complain about women. So mm. I'm just like, is that like this is all it is? And then it's very strange, like to be married in the, in the midst of people who aren't, because yeah. it's almost like seeing a reflection of yourself in the past. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> oh, right, all the yeah. all the problems that you had back then, you're seeing yeah. other people go through them while you're outside of the box, and it's yeah. just kind of embarrassing to look at. So you're are like, they oh. pulling you backwards? Then? Yeah, I don't know. I think is because I live in Brighton. Yeah. There's not that much of a practice in Muslim community here in terms of like young people or people <laughs> around my age, okay. and because of that, and this is like when I first started practicing. The whole reason I was drawn to Twitter was. Um, because of a community, you know. Mm. And I could, for example, I wouldn't have met you if it wasn't for the internet. I wouldn't have met half of the people that I know now because of yeah. it. Um, so that's why, and that's why I can't let it go. Plus, I mm. sort of internalized it in my uh, internet name. So, what's mm. a hacky tweet without Twitter? Do you know what I mean? It's true. He's got tweet in the name. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, low at him, bro. Allah you know what? Um, I remember must have been. So I joined Twitter. Uh, I think it was 2011. Yeah. Um, and back then, uh, I remember because I wasn't living in the UK, right? So I didn't know what Muslims in the UK were like at all. Yeah. So, um, so I started following like Muslims in the UK, and then I got to know what they're like, and I was like really surprised. I imagine, yeah, I had no no idea at all. And yeah. You're right. There was a really strong community vibe. It was almost like it was almost like there were about like. 400 people that all knew each other pretty well like yeah. they had an idea of their leaning right yeah so uh and w- remember yeah there was a time when you could you could put a tweet out there that was like a hot topic yeah yeah and you'd get the whole kind of community to talk about it yeah, yeah and like yeah. F- for a few like hours everyone would be talking about that topic yeah. but now it's like obviously there's more people there the community's not so tight-knit so that won't really happen anymore i guess Mm. right i think a lot of that plays into the generational aspect though because the generation even though it's like what 2013 2014 that i really started pushing that Mm. um those like those that generation 
is now looking at the younger generation of just hopped on with a lot of mm. contempt and a lot of ridicule because mm. what will happen is like they're going through their zeal phase you know or yeah. their their phase of like islam is black wild. and white yeah or islam is islam is xyz and that's all yeah. it can ever be yeah um, okay and because of that whilst a lot of people that are a bit more seasoned have sort of I don't know they've they've either to be honest a lot of them have either fell off that kind of mm. you know publicly performing piety mm. or they have um I don't know I guess been a bit more tolerant in sense of difference of opinion and yeah mature and, you mean yeah yeah exactly yeah that's the word I'm looking for so yeah it's a bit it's a bit of a kerfuffle but mm. you know I, I I love to hate it and I hate to love it so <laughs> you know what it is there's, there's there's actually it's crazy you would never mix with a lot of people that you actually follow on there isn't it oh yeah like so it exposes you to people you would never talk to imagine of course. that's that's something that's actually one of the reasons i left to be honest no, no. because sometimes i ended up debating like this was more in the earlier days um yeah. i would i would debate with people who um they, they don't even uh, merit being debated right they yeah. hold some crazy opinions right that are baseless but you find yourself debating with them, right? So, uh, but then I would still follow them for the sake of uh, being exposed to different opinions, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Then what happens though is every time I see them saying something that I think is so dumb, yeah, I've got to put the kind of mental effort into either filtering it that out or like uh, arguing or whatever, right? So yeah. eventually I just thought, you know, these opinions, like some opinions, obviously uh, I can be wrong, yeah? But some opinions are just so out there that I don't even want to see it. Yeah, and so, yeah, no doubt. So that's why I kind of I started unfollowing those people, and then eventually I just left. I've um, had but, my. I don't blame you because I've had my days where I'm just like, I'm done with this. Like, I don't really want to deal with it anymore. And I think for a long time, I I did sort of. I didn't deactivate, but I did like not post anything anymore and not keep up for a long time. I never checked the timeline. Like, mm. if I had to tweet something, I'd tweet it and I'd go off. That was it. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's a, like, for example, like someone might go on my Twitter now and be like, oh, there's a lot of people following, but mm. it's very, um, what's the word, like irresponsive, which means to me, yeah. like, I don't know, 9,000 odd people have used Twitter back in that generation and then stopped using it and their accounts are just ghosts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? but, but I think engagement in general on Twitter is dead now, right? Uh, yeah. Because I, I I use it for business purposes and I just find it's dead. Like there's just no engagement there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean the it's, whole yeah. It, it it doesn't. It's not conducive to. It's not conducive to a professionally adequate way of of even taking ill, because of like course. we 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 had this discussion the other day about like Shuyok answering questions on Twitter, mm. and it's very like. Yeah, like it's very limiting the amount of stuff they can say. You know, unless they're yeah. going to link you to an article, 140 yeah. characters for a deep question is very dangerous. Like yeah. it can be easily misinterpreted, not only by the person that's asking the question, but everyone yeah. else who wants to ridicule and who's against the the, the sheikh in question. Do you know of what course, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So context is gone. Oh, context absolutely gone. You know, and because there's so many of them, they're all pouring in, and it's so easy to ask a question that no detail has ever gone into, and it's just you know one after another oh this one's got a question this one's got a question yeah yeah so let's move to the general topic we're going to discuss today which is media right yeah of course. so so media firstly like what is media because media could be many things maybe that we don't think of right yeah um for example i mean i don't know I, I, if without looking in a dictionary or anything i'll just say like media is is communicating something like it could be an idea it could be a fact or whatever right so even you could say um uh, t-shirt design is a media is media yeah. right yeah 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 but mostly obviously what we're going to be discussing today is um tv channels youtube channels blogs uh, articles hmm. uh, and of course social media hmm. um that's the the gist of it isn't it yeah of course and um yeah it's just crazy these days because it's so easy to uh produce media now isn't oh, it so if, much easier. imagine yeah like you're a bit younger than me yeah but when i was let's say probably 14 ish mm. right so i was 14 i couldn't produce anything yeah 
I could, I could, okay, I could write something on a piece of paper. I could type it on a computer, but to distribute it is impossible, right? Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to reach that many people. So of now course. anyone can produce, whether it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 140 characters or it's like a two-hour film or whatever, right? It's pretty easy to do that these days. So I guess that brings goes to the topic of like democratization of media mm. and what it means like for the world. Oh, it's unreal now though isn't it like uh, every day is a new viral video you know yeah. my one of my biggest fears is becoming a meme <laughs> like do, do you know what i mean like i've seen there's people that have become like viral through mm. being you know like those random videos of someone being drunk and doing something hilarious the other day mm. i was in town and i saw someone who was a who literally became a meme you know i just really? felt bad for the guy um <laughs> it's scary like I don't know, but then again, like you've got, we both got experience on YouTube. We can start with YouTube, I guess. We, yeah. You know, I, how did YouTube start for me? Before I was even practicing, I was doing things on YouTube, but. Maybe. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't like, the first stuff I did wasn't me as a person. It was just like, uh, you know, editing, compilation, stuff like that. All right. Um, and then, then I started doing a little, like one or two little comedy things that the school like my my school sort of picked up on and passed around yeah yeah and then obviously when i started practicing i i never went out of my way to make like dower material i sort of got roped into it by um obviously i did mm. videos with musa adnan and and that you know that that collaborative effort and mm. uh, i think he he was friends with a mutual friend and he brought us in and i just started sort of telling my story so to speak or speaking about things that i um that I had experience in, but so wait, wait. Let me ask you a question about that. Then. What, what were you thinking when you were doing these videos? Like, what is the the kind of thought process, or was well, there even a thought process? Well, from, I thought it was a cool idea at first that because at the end of, because I was very when I started practicing, I was in I was very angry <laughs> because yeah. I felt like I'd gone however many years, like eighteen years or whenever I started. Uh, 18 years without anything or without anyone telling me all this information that I've just suddenly learned through YouTube you know like yeah. all these lectures that are available on YouTube that's a side of YouTube that I'd never even I didn't know mm. you know okay. I didn't I didn't know there was a community of Muslims so mm. and then it came during a time when I was I felt quite marginalized and mm. like I wasn't part of any sort of social group or anything that I could call my own yeah anywho so I thought okay brilliant I can help because i was angry with the people that i were friends with who were muslims mm. but they weren't practicing i was like come on guys you guys are playing me like this like you haven't told me any of this stuff okay. so a lot of those videos weren't for the general public they were for my community in brighton yeah you know and the timing of some of those videos like i did one about clubbing once and it mm. was during a time when all my friends were about to go clubbing so i was like mm. i need to put this video out tonight you know, mm. and I remember having some people that I knew messaging me that night saying, "Oh, you know, I'm not going to go because X, Y, Z, and I saw your video and blah blah blah." Anywho, mm. uh, fast forward. Um, then, like, it got to a point where I, I that was it for me. Like, my knowledge had run out. Like, I only ever knew to speak about what I'd gone through. I've only right. been practicing for like six months. Mm. What do you want me to speak about? And I remember some brothers suggested, "Oh, why don't you do a video on hijab this week?" And I remember. Yes you know specifically saying i'm not going to do that because i don't know anything about hijab yeah you know? and who am i to tell people to even though i might have done something about modesty and things like that yeah. the, the longer i was in it the more i felt like i wasn't qualified to do it okay so you had a brain then <laughs> i wouldn't say that but it's not just that like when you're when you're a public personality the yeah. fitna is awful yeah the fitna that you know the people that message you i'm you know i'm going to be 100 percent real because this is this is a real podcast bro like mm. we're getting real here yeah uh the fitness is long because no, number one people ask you questions all the time all right yeah number yeah. two you are you essentially obviously showing the best version of yourself okay mm -hmm. of course. and people are attracted to that people yeah. are attracted to to perfect people yeah and you know at the end of the day everyone performs i'm mm. not saying i'm a, i'm not calling myself a hypocrite but so you're not performing now though right no i think i'm pretty pretty real right now okay good <laughs> no but it's you know it's, it is what it is like that notion and i see a lot of brothers affected with that because i don't know i think i've just got an eye for it now because i've been in the game yeah you can sort of, of see when it's affecting them well whoa adam so so uh, in that early stage you, you were mainly doing it because 
you wanted to kind of put these uh, thoughts and ideas out there mostly mm. to like local people. Yeah. And like, uh, basically the, the aim was benefit, right? The, so the, oh, yeah, the idea is going through your head is like, I want to help these people. I need to get this message to these people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it came at a time, the opportunity presented itself to me at a time when I was already trying to reach out to people that I knew, but I couldn't sit and have a conversation with them because they would just get defensive. Mm. So it's easier putting a video out there that they could click right. in their own time because of their own curiosity. Exactly, exactly. And then they come and approach you. So is that like the easy way out then? It is is the easy way out. And I think... No, like seriously though, do you think that? Dude, I think that we neglect our own little circles way more than Mm. the wider community at large because it's easier to. Yeah, I agree, man. Definitely. I was speaking to a few brothers from here recently and I said to them like, what in the hell is wrong with me that Mm. I'm tweeting every day, I've done Mm. YouTube videos and... Mm. I haven't set up anything for the kids here. Mm. Do you know, I'm too busy for the kids here, but I'm not busy for the for the community. Yeah, real talk. Man. Or the and other if, way you, if you think if you think way back, yeah, hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Obviously, uh, one person is very rare that they were going to reach tens of thousands of people, right? No doubt. And, yeah, and no Im- doubt. impossible really to reach hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, even yeah. if you even if you write a book and it ends up getting spread and copied and everything, it's going to take a long time for that to spread anyway, right? Yeah. Of so. Course. So the default was, if you have anything of substance to share or to teach, you're going to do it in your very small circle, yeah? But obviously, you're going to go deep with those people. If those people are going to study with you, like no matter what it is, yeah, whether it's flipping aqidah or whether yeah. it's like a black, like black, was it blacksmith uh, kind of skills, yeah? Yeah. What, whatever you're teaching is going to be on that, not, not maybe one to one or maybe like one to 20 or one to 50, right mm, mm. and so you go you go deep with this small group of people and personally i think that's the model to kind of emulate is like go deep with a small amount of people mm. and then don't worry about the numbers because those let's say you affect 20 people deeply they're going to yeah. go and affect their families and then may, they might end up affecting 20 people yeah. but but you went deep you know what i mean mm. and that's way more satisfying for me at least like it, like after thinking about it a lot and after aiming for my own YouTube channel to reach so many thousands of people, yeah. then I kind of realized like, I'm kind of going on the tangent now, but I realized that uh, in order to reach the tens of thousands or the hundreds of thousands, I yeah. need to do something outlandish or do something taboo or do something controversial, yeah? yeah. And I, like, I'm, I just, I, I can't l- allow myself to do that personally, yeah. yeah? Well, they call so, it clickbait, isn't it? Yeah, whether it's like clickbait is a more innocent thing, right? But there are other things you can do, obviously like, controversial whatever it is yeah um so i couldn't do that so uh so i just had to basically accept that i've got a small audience and then since then i'm just loving it well like i feel like the same 100 or 200 people are watching my videos every week yeah and because of that because they're watching over months and months period it's actually you grow together isn't it yeah exactly like we're moving together uh, and if they heard saw one video and i didn't mention a topic uh, a, a point that i meant to mention they're going to hear it in another video down yeah. the line yeah right so they get like the whole picture with a smaller community though you like it's not just you it's a conversation so you can have yeah. a back and forth and then you're benefiting you're benefiting off your community and they're benefiting off you yeah as yeah. opposed to when it's thousands and thousands of people and it's literally you're the microphone and that's it yeah yeah you know? for sure a lot of animals well, so you you keep up with the YouTube scene then, like yeah yeah. To be honest, I, I really like YouTube. I don't know if you call YouTube social media or just like a, a site, isn't it? It's like media yeah. in general. But yeah, um, I spend probably the most time out of all these like popular sites. I spend the most on YouTube, maybe. Yeah, like yeah. I will I will go to my subscription feed thing, and yeah. like all the videos there, I've subscribed to them, and I know I like the stuff. So yeah. I'll just I watch quite a bit there, to be honest. I think um, it's good because yeah. even though you might see a thumbnail of something you don't like, you mm-hmm. haven't actually consumed that media until you click on it. Pretty much, yeah. As opposed yeah. to like you, as opposed to Twitter, where it's there no matter what. Like, yeah, if yeah. You, once you've seen it, you've seen it. Like that's it's it. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Even if it's like a clickbait thing or controversy thing, if you don't click, you're not really getting to know what happened or any true. of that. True. So, and yeah, you and, know, and if yeah. you're mature and seasoned, you can spot that a mile away. It's true. It's yeah. true. Wow. But, um, you know what so so there is that whole youtube side of things but 
What about, did you never got into like writing anything, did you? In terms of... Like blog, article, mm, blah, blah, blah. Not really. It was something I was interested in, but because I, in all honesty, I did so much writing for university and A-levels and everything, I just didn't yeah. want to do it in my own time either. Yeah. You know? Um, Obviously, it's harder, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But do you is. think like, do you think videos are more... Um, not only are they easier to make, but they have more impact because, like, is anyone bothered to read articles anymore? Yeah, that yeah, that's a good point because I used to think that I used to say, no one reads. Yeah, know? and if someone's going to read, they're going to be reading books. They're not going to waste time on my article. Mm, but maybe. you know, sometimes I have written things and I'll mm. put it on Tumblr or something, even yeah. if it's poetry, you know. <laughs> And mm. it will get passed around a bit, and I'll get very surprised because I'm like, "That's a very long poem." Someone actually yeah. sat and read all of that. Like, there are people that read. That yeah. really surprised me. Mm. But. but there are, you know, I, I, I think basically the same as you. Like, I don't know how many people are bothered to read, but um, there are some like pretty big, like blogs out there. Mm. Um, and I think, uh, like, you know, uh, Muslim Matters. Uh, I've heard of them, but I haven't. Muslim Matters, I think, like, that must be the oldest kind of Muslim-focused blog. Yeah. And so, like, all their stuff is written, right? And yeah. they might, they've been around probably more than 10 years now. Yeah. Um, and they, like, they got normal length articles, like, I don't know, 1,000 words, 2,000 words, whatever, yeah? Um, but I think they, they get a load of traffic. I think maybe they get half a million visitors a month, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So maybe it's, maybe it's for the older people, right? Maybe it's the older people who are reading them. Yeah. But I reckon people do read... If you, but the thing is, you got to be good at, at writing in the end, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, you got to the, the topic got to be interesting, but you got to actually be good at it, and it's perhaps harder to get good at writing as well. Mm. I think, but the, that bubble of people that read, I believe, is getting smaller and smaller because yeah. every every website is targeting now like autoplay videos and scroll videos. So you're scrolling and a video is automatically starts playing as you're scrolling. Mm. And then as soon as that video is done, another video plays automatically straight afterwards, you mm. know, and it's all video content. And yeah, I mean, a lot of my content consumption is while I'm at work. And because I work, you know, I'm currently working where I've just got like one headphone in my ear. Everything mm. is audio based. Like even on yeah. YouTube, I'm not going to watch anything. I'll have to, it's going to be a lecture or something that is, that I can listen to the audio and not miss out on anything else. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, by the way, um, you know, I, I only watch YouTube on like 1.5 speed or double speed, yeah? They just brought that feature to the app, so oh, I'm wow. so happy. I'm happy oh, about really? That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, no, I've got to have it in its natural state, bro. I can't be speeding it up. Really? Yeah, bro. So hard on that. I must have saved like hundreds of hours by listening to stuff <laughs> double speed. Yeah, but you're <laughs> methodical, bro. Like, I, yeah. I just have to take it as it is. Yeah, yeah. No, but you know, that the, that's a, an interesting point because... Uh, I think the difference between watching a video and reading, right, yeah. is when you're reading, because it's slower, you're, you're thinking more about what you're reading and you're um, taking more of it in, perhaps. Yeah. And you're kind of filtering and you're questioning. And so I do think that's really useful. And you don't get that with videos, you know. Mm. So, like, in the end, yeah, obviously everything is balanced. And I think you should read and, and videos are good as well. Yeah, but you good. should always read because it, it's, a, it's just a different thing. Hmm. And so if you mix it up, you're going to get the full kind of benefit. If you're looking for benefit, that is. If you're, if you're looking for, like, just entertainment, then, yeah, like, maybe not read, you know? Yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised. Like, well, then again, what is reading? Because if I Google something, hmm. right, like a subject that I'm interested in, and there's yeah. an article on it, I'll read the article, you know, yeah. and I'll be engaged with that. And do people count that as reading? Would you count that as reading? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because a lot of people think it's just books. No, really. articles are saying article just you know book a book is like gonna be obviously they've picked a topic they've mm. obviously you know what it is as well i can write a blog post in like half an hour right mm. but it's gonna take me at least half a year to write a book so yeah, of that's the other benefit maybe of a book is that really you gotta kind of put a lot of like effort in and mm. if someone's put that much effort it means like they really believe in this thing maybe they've really done their research etc but so then that's my my my, yeah. my um like the apprehensiveness I have sometimes of reading books mm. is that that information could be outdated now and I wouldn't know. Yeah, you know it depends I mean? on like, the topic though. Yeah, 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 it does. I suppose. Uh, oh, I man. don't. Know. I tend to read like timeless stuff, like that just doesn't matter when it was really. So. Mm. 
So, but mm-hmm. again, like so, books are me are a form of media as well, mm. uh, blog posts and stuff. Um, but I just I've got so we got this list of different publishers. So I said I said Muslim Matters, but you didn't know them, right? So maybe that shows. Um, it's like, really funny. Yeah, like I'm looking at this yeah. list as well, and yeah. I don't think I know most of them. Yeah, like no, me, like me neither. Like, I don't consume a lot of this stuff, but I know that they exist from yeah. day like a while ago, right? But, but what so, does that mean, though? Like, why is it we don't consume that? Well, it like, depends on on which one it is, right? So, go on, Muslim Matters, for example. Like in my head, I know that they've got good, well thought out, me like thoughtful stuff. Of course. Um, I just, to be honest, I don't see it coming up anywhere that I spend time, right? So that's going to be one reason. But yeah. also, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't really always want other people to tell me their opinion. I just kind of form my own. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, because an, an article is going to be a secondary source, if you like, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So instead, you could just go to the primary source and then come to your own conclusion. I don't know. Allah So that's like Muslim Matters because they're all like, like deeper kind of thoughtful stuff. Also, I think it's like North American based. So a lot of it is going to be more relevant to the U.S., yeah. Even though you know, it's, there's some crossover. Um, what about Islam Twenty One C? Do you know them? Um, yeah. So, so sometimes I might. Um, I think I've got them on Facebook, and sometimes an article might catch my eye. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I've been on it, and it's quite. To be honest, it, it, I like I like the what's sort of the like the outlay of it all, and the way everything's structured. Yeah, uh, yeah but it's, I, it's still pretty formal, isn't it? Yeah, and I do like how engaging it is. I feel like they're always like they've got their thumb on the pulse of the community, sort of thing. Mm, yeah. yeah, I think it's good. It's it's more news based though, right? It's not like it's definitely not like looking for viral videos. It's yeah. it's more. Sometimes you get really good posts there by like actual mashayikh and stuff. Mm. So and not not to mention the fact that it's quite like outspoken, because it's like you know it's but it's. Uh, Produced or whatever by um, MRDF, right? So like Sheikh Haytham's thing. So, okay. uh, like his stance is like, you know, he's gonna do his thing kind of thing. So that's how the thing kind of follows. So it's quite outspoken uh, in that sense, uh, and you know they de- basically don't compromise. So that's pretty good. But then again, it's like news, right? Mostly it's news and it's like current affairs. So in that sense, I don't think it's gonna be one of the most popular ones, right? Hmm. Um, what about Iman Channel? See, now this is where like I am completely like out of the picture because I don't watch any of like Muslim Islamic Islamic TV channels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like unless it's like oh it's Hajj season, I'm gonna put like the the, the Mecca channel on or something. Yeah. And I just want to watch the live stream of, of Hajj. But other than that, TV in general, bro, like it's not. I can't put it on. I can't. Do you have a TV? Yeah, I've got TV, okay. um, but I just don't watch like channels in general. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Same. because so, I always yeah. I, there's always an alternative, you know. Like yeah, TV yeah. is the last thing on my list to watch. Yeah, yeah. Even like I'm, I'm sometimes I'm sitting here. My dad's watching TV. I just think like, how can you watch TV and be dictated to what you're gonna watch, right? Mm, <laughs> like, why don't yeah. you search it on YouTube and get whatever yeah, you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, like, Iman Channel, it's like a year old or something like that. And so I was kind of confused, like, why are you doing a TV channel? Why don't you just, you've got all this, these shows you're doing, why don't you just make a YouTube channel and, yeah. and make it like on demand, like you just go watch it whenever you like, or you could even do a subscription thing, you know, like yeah. five pound a month, 10 pound a month, whatever it is, yeah? That would be better. I don't know why they went down the TV route, like maybe there's probably reason for it. Yeah, but, there's always a reason. But, uh, you know, maybe like the thing is, like we're like younger right so we kind of think the world revolves around us but oh, maybe maybe like the we're not the most important demographic like always so oh, trust me like sometimes i will be like i'm the bearded guy you know so what happens is if i go to a house where there isn't you know they're not people that are openly practicing but they mm. want to respect me oh yeah let's put let's put the islamic channel on while you're having tea <laughs> oh, do you know really? what i mean yeah it's always like that so if you go somewhere where in their own time they'll probably be watching top of the pops but then mm. when you're coming in with your thobe and that, it's like, oh, mm. yeah, let's, let's, oh, here you go. You want to watch this, don't you? And they'll put yeah. like Islam, the Islam channel on or something. Mm. I'm like, yeah. okay, you don't have to perform for me. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but the, you know what? 
Uh, I did that show uh, a few years ago now, Above the Mark, where we basically, oh, yeah. we would like sell, like produced it all ourselves, me and a guy called Ibrahim. Yeah. Um, so it was just like literally us two, uh, cameras, whatever, microphones. We went out, we interviewed a load of Muslims that we found that we thought did like really interesting stuff, like yeah. whether it's, uh, we interviewed Abu Bakr from Roadside to Islam. We interviewed, um, uh, you know, the, I forgot his name now, man, but um, the guy that does the Willowbrook farm, you know, that halal free range farm. Oh, um, really? I think, yeah. So we went there actually to his farm. We interviewed him. We got all these interviews, yeah? Right. We put them together into episodes. So we had the interview, then we discussed the topic, and then we did like street interviews and stuff like that. So that was a really good experience, putting all that together, putting it into like 25 minute episodes. To be honest, like, that, I didn't. Do is that, that still editing. on there? Is that still on YouTube? So the, we did like version one, if you like. We put that uh -huh. on YouTube. Then Huda TV wanted to put it on their TV uh, oh. channel. So we made a new version. Like uh, we we produced it better, um, TV friendly we, one, huh? Yeah, like <laughs> no, like we didn't take anything out in terms of content, but we we improved it, I could say, yeah, yeah. And we also like you know Abu Bakr, he works with the uh, Huda TV, right? So okay, yeah. Um, so he came uh, when we were filming a large part of it. He was there as well, so he was helping us out, and um, yeah, then we gave it to them. So it's it, I think it's still being shown on Huda TV. I'm not sure. Uh, we had like 10 episodes in the end, like 25 minutes each. And that was an interesting experience. It was definitely good. But I'm just thinking like that's being shown on TV, but I don't know who's watching it. Like, is anyone watching yeah, it? I don't know. Yeah. So Hit them up, been... man. Tell them. I want to see the numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm not that bothered. But I'm, I, it does make me wonder, like, if we put that on YouTube, wouldn't it be better? Like, or yeah, maybe both, and the thing right? is, YouTube, it will keep coming, you know, and you'll keep seeing it. And yeah, that, that's the yeah. thing, I, I'll put something up on YouTube and it will just collect views over time. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. So, a lot of Ireland. But at the same time, when we did version one and we put that on YouTube, honestly, it, didn't get, it got like 500 views per show. And this is like well filmed and produced. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like you, maybe you're not going to win over people if they the first thing they see from you is like 25 minutes, you know. Yeah, so it, it's a struggle out here, man, for like yeah. <laughs> this media thing. So um, we did that. Then we did another show called Yam, yeah, okay. um, uh, Y A W uh, uh, M, yeah. Um, and it, that was different. That was like way more casual. We just literally we got load of random guys in a room in a studio for a whole day, and we just had these topics thrown at us, and we all sat on like a sofa and we just discussed it. Mm. So that that is on YouTube. It's uh, again like Ibrahim worked on that with me, and his channel is uh, Ilm, uh, Ilm Film. So I L M. Oh, and then film. I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen a lot of their work. That that yeah, yeah. sort of work is the stuff that I was looking at recently, and I just thought mm. this this is this is it. This is what's good. Like I yeah. like like I know everyone wants to do Dawa, and everyone wants mm. to do something. You know. Yeah. I like topic based things or history based things or factual yeah. things like. You know, yeah, it doesn't he does have like to be, documentaries. Exactly, it doesn't have to be controversial mm. or anything. Like, yeah. this is what's happened. These are the facts, and I'm putting it out there for you. Like, that's all. Yeah. That's all I really want sometimes. Yeah. So that channel is definitely good, but again, it's not produced in this. I guess it's not produced in like a 2017 way, which is a good and bad thing to be honest. Because I've like those documentaries about like these Muslim people we should know and we should like look up to. Mm. Like, uh, I think the series is called. Uh, uh, great Muslim lives. Oh and yeah. So each one's like twenty, thirty minutes, and you just like find out about these different people, like many different ones. Yeah, like dip from different places, parts of the world, different styles, everything. He, he's got like from Malcolm X to uh, Bin Baz to um, I yeah. don't know Abdurrahman Sumait. So that stuff is good. But this yeah. show we did was like way more twenty seventeen. We just. It was, I think, I don't know, 10 minutes per episode. And we had like, well, like Musa Adnan was in it. We had like uh, Abdullah Sharif, who's like a poet guy from uh, Birmingham and stuff. Uh -huh. So it was a good one, Wallah. And I think I would like to do more stuff like that, perhaps. Definitely. Um, Definitely. But, There's but so many mean, gaps in the market, man. Yeah. There's so many gaps of things. like, And then this is the thing, like, people complain. And, and at the end of the day, I, I put this up the other day, how... Any initiative is knocked down by the mm. community that it's made for. 
straight away. But the mm. moment it's successful, or the moment it picks up speed, then everyone mm. wants to be it and do it. You mm. know, mm. Um, it goes with anything. Like uh, you're, you know, you're no stranger to like the businesses that I, that I involve myself in, like Pure XI, which some people mm. may or may not know. Yeah. Um, it was a clothing clothing thing that I did, and for whatever reason, I couldn't carry it on. But um, at the time, the moment, mm. like the day I I said, oh, you know what, I'm going to go out and do this. Mm. everyone looked at me funny like do you know what I mean oh you're just jumping on a wave or <laughs> you're not do you know what I mean like no, even people in Brighton like my community sort of dissed it and then I don't know it just picked up it picks up speed with strangers and it picks mm. up speed with people that don't know you or yeah. are not part of your community and yeah. then when and that's the thing our community seems to be one that looks outward and, and, and appreciates what's out and doesn't really care about what's yeah making but, what's being made in you know but that's human nature no like I don't know you know what but it is it, yeah the fact that the fact that your your local people ever they didn't support you as much as strangers yeah yeah that's very interesting because maybe that means they're jealous I'm not saying they are jealous but it, it yeah. could mean they're jealous right yeah. um, another thing is people Okay, what's a huge like media producer like Vice, yeah? Oh yeah. Vice. So Muslims will watch Vice, yeah. If I yeah. went and created my own Vice, they'd hate yeah. on it, right? Of course. Like not they all would, but many would, yeah. Yeah. But why is that? It's because they this is what I think, yeah, it's not like a theory. They see Vice as so above them yeah. that they're not even going to fight with it, right? Yeah. Whereas oh this guy like he looks like me or he could be me. And so yeah. Like, so therefore he's my competitor so therefore I've got to take him down but would you feel guilty do you say you've ever felt like do you feel guilty for ever feeling that way as well like would you admit to ever feeling that sort of animosity for a new initiative because uh, I, I would admit to mm, it I would say yeah, yeah. I could I would give an example give an example I don't know like I can go back to the clothing thing because I was involved yeah. in it like sometimes yeah. I would see a new startup or well, actually another thing because once you're there and you're reasonably established within your community, then the messages start flooding in. Other people want advice to start their own thing. Okay, yeah, you yeah. Know? And my, I remember the first few times I'd get those messages, and it was daily, like, it was daily, but the first, like, few weeks, I would be very, like, oh, come on, you've got to be joking, oh, come on, like, and then I'd look on their account, I'd be like, come on, what is this, like, you can do better than this kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I remember saying to myself, I'm not helping anyone who hasn't already got some originality yeah you know yeah. but then but, but but is that is that like jealousy not really i think i think a lot of it comes from like a subconscious feeling mm. of this person wants to compete with me you know yeah partly, yeah. I guess. yeah but and i think it's a lot of it's natural but after a while i was like what the hell am i doing like why am i keeping this information secret like mm. i'd love to I want to work with people. I don't want to work against them, you know. Mm. And and I think a lot of people have to tell themselves that. And now, like I'd say, I'm at a stage. Even though I don't do clothing, but anything, anything with me. Like, yeah. I I I love the idea of like Muslims, like this generation specifically, like the second generation Muslims, the ones that were born here, mm. like really, um, not not just complaining that culture isn't going their way, but like promoting their own. Mm. Like, like we were talking about um, proactive, basically. Yeah, like okay, you've got people that are good with their media, YouTube, brilliant. You've got people mm. doing their clothing, brilliant. Mm. You've got people doing their perfumes or whatever, brilliant. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I know there's a really cliche things that Muslims yeah. do at the moment, but it's yeah. only ever going to grow. Like if exactly. we exactly, it's just a foundation. Exactly, if we can master what we're good at, then we can start jumping onto other things. You know? Yeah. And not every Muslim, and I've said this as well, <laughs> people don't understand this, but not every Muslim that makes content has to make it Islamic of course Do you know what yeah. I mean? because here's another thing I love the idea of Muslim personal trainers mm. you know like people that do because there's there's people that like non-Muslims on YouTube or whatever media doing mm. personal training all sorts making all sorts of money or doing all sorts making all sorts of progress yeah. and then why why you know why don't we support brothers who are actually doing that as well you know yeah. People have skills like there's plumbers, there's electricians, there's mechanics, there's you know there's DIY guys. There's like when was the last time you saw a DIY Muslim channel? I'm not saying that it's openly Muslim, but the guys are Muslim and he's yeah, doing that. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. Yeah. But uh, one guy there. that comes to mind, who is Muslim but he doesn't make his content all about being Muslim, is yeah. um, uh, his name Safwan. 
uh, yeah. the phone guy, tech guy. You know him? Oh, no, no, I don't. Uh, what, uh, his name is Saf. On YouTube, yeah? His name is Saf something. Let me, let me search YouTube quickly, yeah? Saf, and then uh, I'll just put tech or something. Well, like there that. you go. You, you beat me now because I, I put a challenge Super to you saying, saying if you know anybody, and straight away you brought up someone. Yeah, Super Saf. That's yeah. good though. So this guy's got nearly seven hundred thousand oh, yeah, subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, so he's obviously Muslim, yeah. Although, yeah. His, it, it, no, he puts his name straight there, Safwan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And people know he's Muslim, yeah. And he just does like videos about phones exactly. and tech. And as far as I know, he gets uh, he gets like some sponsorship deals with like Samsung and like that's good, like good for him, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But then this this is the thing, like a lot of people. <laughs> They feel like I have to act a certain way, I suppose, you know. But like, the thing is, because because he's not making stuff about that is Islamic, like with the yeah, label, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably why he doesn't get haters. Yeah, yeah. yeah because exactly. people see him like he's not in my category, so therefore he's not competition. Yeah, true, true. true so true. that's interesting. But on the same at the same time. Um, it, like we were discussing just before we recorded I'm like I can't do stuff that is gonna like relate to non-Muslims right mm, so yeah. at the same time that's just who I am but that's yeah. who I am when it comes to a uh, podcast right yeah. but maybe when I do other stuff like in my business or whatever I can yeah. work with non-Muslims no problem right yeah, and true. I could I could be known as someone who's very good at my <laughs> own like craft um, yeah. without it being like oh he's Muslim of course, it's, what is important, though, is that when you get to a level of uh, people respecting you or people, uh, like a good reputation, basically, yeah. it's important that you are outwardly Muslim to a an, yeah. uh, an certain extent, you know? Like, I always say, I wish for the day that Muslims will make something like Google, you know? Because, yeah. because then everyone looks up to Google, right? It's like second yeah. biggest, uh, second uh, most valuable company in the world or whatever. Um, when the CEO of Google or the founder or whatever, yeah, Larry Page and stuff, when yeah. they get up and they, they do some kind of conference, yeah, and they're speaking, imagine they're saying, oh, the, the people always want to know like these success secrets, yeah? yeah. So what if the, he said, oh, one of my main secrets is I had tawakkul in Allah. And, I, yeah. and I, uh, like, I made sure that the whole business was run in a halal way, yeah? Like, how mad would that be? That's what I want to see, yeah. you know. But the truth is, a lot of Muslims would not like to see a, a Muslim, uh, a, like Google created by a Muslim. Like, mm. I don't really know why, but I think it's because there's that perception that you can't be like a multi-billion dollar company in tech and be Muslims. Like, I don't know why there's like a disconnect. Like, it's too yeah, because, above us or something. Because, oh, there's children dying in XYZ country and you're a billionaire. It's your fault. Yeah, but like do you know the of, impact Google has? Yeah, but like, dude, everyone, all like, okay, not everyone, but a lot of Muslims, they're just finger pointers. Like, that's yeah. what it is, you know? And any successful person, mm. they'll point the finger at them for their own, like, God, I remember, I, I'm not advocating listening to Jay-Z or anyone, but I remember Jay-Z said something along the lines of, uh, he, God, he, he told his uncle that he was going to sell a million records one day or something. Yeah. And his uncle said, no, you can't do that. That's impossible. Mm. And he said to him, like, his response was sort of like, it's not like I can't do that. It's like, you can't do that. And that's why you're <laughs> imposing that to me, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people are imposing their you know, no-can-do attitude upon, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's true. You know, that's it's that's true. just the way it is, you know? Yeah. So I'm learning now to be a little bit more accepting. Like, okay, if there's a Muslim vlogger, as mm. long as he's not doing haram, mm. you know? Go for it, bro. Like if that, if that, if you want to do that, there's nothing wrong, and as long as it's not impermissible, do you understand? Mm. As long as something like okay, if you're not putting music in or dancing, whatever your opinion is on music and all that, you know, yeah. or women or whatever, whatever your yeah. opinion is, uh, you can. I, th I find it challenging, but also the challenge is is nice to produce mm. something that isn't actually controversial in terms of halal and haram. You know, yeah. I remember when I was doing the clothing, for example. Like there, there were surprisingly a lot of obstacles in marketing and a lot of obstacles. Like yeah. I don't believe in music Model is permissible. Situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't believe music is permissible. So, but the whole scene, the industry, is revolves around music. Like that, that culture of clothing yeah, revolves around cool. music. You know. Yeah. So I, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. How far can I get? You know. Mm. Oh, a lot of people, like even menswear, 
they mm. use um, female models because yeah. sex sells. You know, that's just the bottom line. Mm. So, and I said to myself, I'm going to try my best not to. You know, yeah. And it's it's difficult, but then you have to learn to accept it. So you know what? Actually, if I do it this way, and Allah will put barakah in it because of that, and mm. he was, and Allah will see how much I'm struggling because of that, then mm. then with with Allah's help and with Allah's you know other, I'll be successful. Yeah, and then you know once I mean? you're successful, then no one can say, "Hey, look, like I can't. I just have to do it the other, the way other people do it." Yeah, because you like you know people always use that that phrase like uh, breaking down barriers or whatever. Yeah, it is. that's yeah. what it is in the end. Uh, but the thing is, the barriers are in your head most of the time, isn't it? Mm. It's yeah. like oh, people assume you can't do an ad without music in it. Well, you know, yeah. you can assume it, but until you actually do it. If you do it and again and oh, again yeah. and it keeps flopping, then you could say, "Yeah, you can't do an ad." Dude, I've but, seen I've seen some super impactful ads like for anything like automobiles that have no music whatsoever, and it's just the car, yeah. and yeah, it's just yeah. the way it's shot, the way it's framed. Like it could just be like thunder and lightning, it could yeah. be anything, any sort of yeah. soundtrack, someone for talking, sure. silence, and it's impactful. Like because everyone thinks that music, for example, is the go-to thing, and mm. I think really this is something we should touch on in this topic. Yeah. The idea of music in media and and haram elements in media. Fair enough. Anyone listening might not disagree. Might not agree with the music issue, right? But me and you, we can agree that music is impermissible. Now that's our viewpoint in yeah. terms of the Shari perspective that we hold, yeah. right? So coming at it from that angle, which a lot of Muslims do, yeah. you know, people will say, ah, oh, but the me, like, how are we going to make media without music? You know, how are we going to mm. do a video? Without? And now there's one thing putting nasheeds in. Personally, yeah. I'm not too. Like I'm not a huge fan of Nasheed. <laughs> there is a difference of opinion. No, no, but I've, I've sort of, I, I don't. I'm not going to tell anybody not to, you know, because yeah. that's beyond me. But me as yeah. an individual, like I'm not really in, on that wave. Yeah. But mainly because it, it just anyway, I'm not going to get into that. that's a big discussion. But <laughs> but yeah, what other things are there that can you do? And then I've just thought is why don't I just not put anything and then make your media engaging enough for whoever wants to consume it to just not even think about that. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, like, a lot of people will not experiment before they are fatalistic about it, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's a good term. I like so, that. I want to write that down. So, fatalistic. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's the thing. So yeah. you know, if you get anything out of this, then it'll probably be like, don't assume and just experiment first. You know. Yeah. True. 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 I respect the the boys that do it, man. They're like, don't do, like, they go out of their way to to. Like yeah. there's a lot of people there's a lot of people and you know m more love and respect to them bro because mm. they are pioneers of the stuff they do you know yeah. I, t I could sit here listing people out but I don't really want to don't really want to yeah. make anybody shy <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay you know what I wanted to mention is I think one of the kind of media whatever publishers yeah that mm. we both think are doing it sick is uh, in feed right yeah so Ilm feed, like, what would you say it's all about? Because I think I, I, I got it subconsciously what their aim is, but what did you get out of what they're all about? Um, well, it's like trying to put it into a nutshell. It's very difficult. I just think it's like the pulse, isn't it? It's literally like your thumb on the pulse of 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 the internet culture of of media in general. It's basically like news like a, a news site actually i know it reminds right. me a little bit of buzzfeed yeah like, obviously that's from the yeah. name but but oh is it when oh, was yeah, the last i didn't time? even think of that <laughs> really <laughs> yeah, i didn't even wow. think of that it still just made sense to me now <laughs> subhanallah <laughs> no definitely man feed come on i didn't even think of that because i thought of feed as like the actual you know the word feed i didn't think of it linked in with buzzfeed oh. yeah Wallah, but when was the last time you saw something from Ilm Feed which um, is about suffering or or like war? Or yeah, it's all positive, isn't it? It's positive. That's it. it that's it, yeah. bro. That, that's what Ilm Feed is. I realize yeah. it's it's positive stories from the Ummah. That's pretty much what it is. And yeah, and that's exactly what we lack. Like, there's yeah, positive things we that's do. That's what's all so the time. sick about it. They didn't just like. Well, it's not. It's not they, innit? It's him, but what he uh, has done is not just make sick like well produced stuff that is viral or whatever that spreads he's actually focused on stuff that's positive 
Mm, and of course. obviously that will give him less to talk about, of but course. he's found the positive stuff. He's put it out there. And I reckon it actually does the job. Like, look, man, I'm so critical. Yeah. of a lot of stuff. Yeah. In, yeah. Including what I do. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what he's done, I think it will actually have the impact he's aiming to have. Yeah. Like, which recently, is pretty rare. Recently, his coverage of the Hajj riders. So the, the, the yeah. people that rode bicycles from London to Mecca. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, um, he was in touch with those guys and you know general contact through whatsapp or whatever and they'd send him videos and that and he he was if you wanted to follow that elm feed was your go-to guy you know yeah. you'd have to and that was just just that was positive and that that goes beyond the thing is with the positivity is mm. it goes beyond boundaries it even goes beyond sects mm. you know because of course yeah. you know it goes beyond like this and that it, like muslim man does xyz oh look anyone shares that whether yeah. you're sunni shia sufi whatever you want to call yourself do you know what yeah. i mean people want to share that because it it's, it brings a positive light to muslims in a dark time yeah for you know? sure and yeah, and also so. it gives you like it, motivation i suppose yeah it's like there actually is positive stuff yeah um, and and I, I just like it so much because it's overcoming a lot of what uh, mass media puts yeah. out is negative yeah. right and there's reasons behind that other yeah. than you know they're not like specifically hating on muslims they just have a thing with negative stuff yeah, yeah. so if you do in the positive side you're like actually a counterbalance to that yeah so of course. alhamdulillah it's really good man it's really i good. just want to say as well like for anyone still listening with us if you do have like positive stories or you can make content or something mm. that that you believe will put a smile on people's faces in terms of you know the the muslim community you mm. should hit them up because i i remember going on the site and they always want you know articles and content and writers and stuff yeah uh, as far as i know anyway so hit yeah. them up and see what you know see what you can contribute because yeah. for, for for you know for a small team or whatever he's doing a lot of work and the more we can add to it the better a place it is for people to sort of wipe their mind of um of all the doom and gloom yeah for real for real um, what was I going to say? Yeah, also, the thing that... Look, I told you, yeah, I'm critical, yeah? There's too much cheesy positivity out there. Yeah. And this is not cheesy. Like, this is like, this guy did this, and it's a positive thing. It's not... Yeah, no doubt. It's not like, oh, my God, I hate the flipping... You know those, like, vloggers, yeah? They'll yeah. look in the camera. They'll be like, come on, stay positive, guys. Or <laughs> be positive. You just yeah. got to think of positive. I hate that so much, man. Yeah. And it, it's so, like, it's really fake. You could see it oozing out of, like, how, like, the thing is, yeah, people have uh, mixed between being um, kind of excited and being happy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not the same. Like, no one's going to go through their day with a huge grin on their face. No matter yeah. how good their life is, yeah. No yeah. matter how content they are with their life. It's just not, like, real, isn't it? So, mm. that, and I don't think that helps people either. Like just telling them, basically what you're telling your followers or your audience or whatever, you're telling them if you're not always excited and grinning and over the moon, then you're not yeah. happy. But that's the thing. There's two types of consumers, bro. There's the consumer that just consumes the video. And then there's the consumer that wonders why the video was made. You know, yeah, and, and I think me and you maybe would put ourselves in the second category because when someone's like doing a motivational talk or something like that, mm. I'm thinking you're making this video for views and you're just <laughs> making it because you want me to click and yeah. now you're going to get paid. And that's why you're positive. I'm yeah. not positive because I'm not getting paid to watch this, but you're getting paid to make it, <laughs> you know, and that's that's maybe my pessimistic side. But a lot of the time I can't deny that that might be the case. Yeah, no you know? doubt. And then they're yeah. like. I notice, yeah, whenever they, they purposely are trying to do something motivational, yeah, they put music behind their voice. Yeah. Like, it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like a movie, <laughs> it's so bro. cheesy, man. Oh, Artificial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, own feed is organically, authentically positive. Yeah, it's because news, it's, bro. Yeah, it's real life stuff happening that is good, Yanni. And the yeah. thing is, before own feed existed, there was, men, there was loads of positive stuff. But when you distribute it and you kind of, you know, you clean it up a bit, make it look nicer... Hmm. then it's gonna it's gonna reach more people basically so Dude, like the whole the whole site is orange bro like when was the last time you saw muslims using the color orange <laughs> no honestly like i know i know that's like a funny thing to say but it's so legit like color goes a long way like yeah, okay. something eye-catching because once i see that i'm like i associate orange like when i see a muslim story i don't even have to see envy as long as mm. i see like orange in some sort of art or low i'm thinking oh that's from Elmfield, you know oh like, yeah yeah it, it's 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 I think the wider discussion is that it's 
it's branding as well. Like it's very simple, yeah. very easy to consume as well. Mm. And I think he started doing um, those kind of, you know, when there's a viral news story or video, and then there's text that overlays on top of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, sort of briefly explaining what's happened and what you they know. call that AJ Plus style. Ah, there you go. Also, they, yeah. they AJ was it AJ Plus? Is that like associated with Al Jazeera? Yeah, yeah. There's, okay, they they founded it. So yeah, everybody yeah, they pioneered that kind of style, it. isn't it? Yeah. So that style is everywhere, but it's easy to consume. You know. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Although I personally, I'm very audio focused, so I prefer to listen to people telling me mm. what the news is. Mm. But it works. It works for people, you know. Yeah. No, I just want to say, like, because if if I don't know if pe if you know me, you know that I'm very critical. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, when people when Muslims will come out with some initiative. I'm, yeah. I'm always thinking, like whether I agree or disagree with that, I'm thinking, okay, if that is your goal, are you actually going to reach your goal, right? Yeah. And with Elm Feed, I think they are reaching their goal, right? Yeah. But I wanted to talk about a couple other publishers because this is an example, I think, of what either maybe the, the aim is not so good or yeah. the aim is like you're not going to reach that aim in the first place, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So in the list we got, so I've got muslimgirl.com, yeah? So if we look at uh, their about page to know like what they're all about. So obviously, I don't know, they're a publisher, they write blog posts, etc. I don't know, mm. I think they do some videos and stuff like that as well. They said, they, uh, they said we're here because we're normalizing the word Muslim for both Muslims and non-Muslims, okay? So I don't know, man, when, when I see normalizing Muslim, yeah. what I interpret that is, we're gonna show non-Muslims that we're like them, yeah? Oh, so that's yeah. why I got my kind of, uh, oh, you know, red did, flag. I think comes I up. have, yeah, I think I have come across this site, and yeah, it was one of those sites where I clicked it and then clicked off immediately. Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, like anyone listening to this now will just say, if they support this site, I don't know anything about it. Number one, number yeah. two, we're just two men who are being anti. You know, we're misogynists right Wait, now. Wait, I'm not even anti yet. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't even thing. get there. No, yet. no, no, dude, dude. The fact that you, the first thing you said just now, even though you haven't got there yet, a lot of people yeah. switch off. The moment you said, "Oh, mm. I got the vibe that this, this," that's yeah, it. Yeah. People yeah. switch off, you know. Yeah. And I think we're both guilty of that. Like I switched off already, you know, because mm. as soon as I clicked it, I was like, ah, right, because yeah. of the, because of that. But go on, explain yeah, it yeah. further to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, like, I'm trying to be objective here, and I'm saying, yeah. are they going to reach their objective, or is it a good objective, etc. Right? So they're saying they want to normalize the, the the word Muslim. Okay. Yeah. That's the first kind of thing. The second thing is that basically they're saying we we want to we at Muslim Girl are taking back the narrative. We use our own voices to speak for ourselves. That yeah. sounds sick, right? Yeah. Uh, we are raising the place of Muslim women in mainstream society. We are drawing awareness to the Quran's message of gender equality and mm. Islam's principles of peace. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. So this is their aim basically, right? Um, see, this is, this is the interesting thing. And this, I'm not picking on them specifically. I'm just taking yeah. it as an, as an example of many initiatives. And this is something to learn from. Yeah. It's not like yeah, to yeah, true, tear true, true. walls down or whatever. Yeah. The thing is, yeah, when I, when I read this, they're saying that, so we use our, our voices to speak up for ourselves. Like that's good. That's kind of why we wanted to cover this topic in the first podcast, right? Because yeah, true. we want Muslims to own their media and own their narrative true. and speak, like, speak for themselves, right? True. Um, but then what they say is we're drawing awareness to the Quran's message of gender equality. So mm. it's kind of questionable that gender equality is the correct term to use here, right? Mm. Um, and then uh, and Islam's principle of peace. Now notice, yeah, gender equality and peace, yeah? What yeah. do these two things have in common? They are what non-Muslims are using to attack Islam, right? Yeah. So what yeah. does that mean when I read that? I just understand that this whole website is a reaction. It's a backlash. Yeah, so when mm. you come from a reactionary kind of perspective, I don't think you're getting anywhere personally. Well, maybe, yeah, everything's warped, you know? Everything is warped to okay, we need to make this because recently this has been said about us. And we yeah. to, and that goes, you know, put, put this site to the side, that goes for everyone that makes media, you know? I, yeah. I, I cringe every time a, 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 a tiny little atheist and like very angry, you know, anti-Muslim atheist guy makes a video and then 10 Muslim YouTubers have to make a reaction video. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, You're because just giving I, him more. Yeah, I would have never known about that guy if he didn't tell me. Yeah. And there's there's thousands of people like that in the world. So you're gonna make a reaction to every single one of them. Yeah, you know. And also, like, if you're gonna do this, you have to know exactly what the Quran's message is. Like saying Quran's message of gender equality. Like mm-hmm. you really gotta know that. Firstly, secondly, Islam's principle of peace. Hmm. Um, like, like, just when you use that, yeah, you, I just can hear a hundred people saying, "Yeah, well, what about like war in the Quran?" Yeah. So, like, you're opening yourself up. Like, if you don't know like what you're talking about as well, yeah, y- you're opening yourself up for a lot of criticism from hmm. both sides. Yeah, so I mean, we don't know. Like, uh, that that site could be run by. It could have like members on it that are you know educated Quran. It could Sunday, be straight yeah, women. You know, I don't know. My you know our assumptions. My assumption, at least, I can't speak hmm. for you. Is yeah. always going to be pessimistic at the start because of what I said <coughs> earlier. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think because I've been so deep in this community for so long, mm. I've inherited some of its pessimism. <laughs> oh, right. <yeah. laughs> you know, and uh, I've got to talk myself out of it. So my initial reaction was, "Oh, actually, no." But now I'm trying to think. Well, you know what? It's what like I'd rather my sister, um, you know, tr- learn from Muslims than learn from what whatever magazines they have these days. Mm. You know what I mean? And if it gets to you know these girls may Allah bless them may Allah guide them may Allah keep them on fir- like firm on the Quran and Sunnah bro mm-hmm. because if if they can do that then that's brilliant you know yeah. and that goes for everyone if you want to do something being related forget yeah. it actually if you want to do some anything as yeah. long as it doesn't go against Quran and Sunnah even if you want to teach people how to if you want to review like the latest gadgets yeah. you know as long as it's Quran and Sunnah bro the, the more power to you yeah, because sure. I don't what I don't like and why I'm always anti is people compromising mm. to fit the, the the wider narrative of what media yeah. is. You yeah. Know? Whether yeah. it's a movie, whether it's an article, whether it's a YouTube video, whether anything, anything. Whether mm. it's even this podcast, bro. The moment like, you know, we have to put in a funky beat behind our voice just to get people to listen, yeah. I'm out. Like that's yeah. it. You know? What because, really? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I mean I mean, then what's the point, you know? Like the whole the whole fun is the challenge of 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 going yeah. against that narrative yeah. and, 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 and that's that's good though that's that's an important point is that yeah. the challenge is fun and the journey is part of the fun yeah uh, but i don't know man not everyone thinks like that but i think mm. it's a really healthy way of thinking yeah dude i think that in my head i'm like in the in front of allah i can say this is the effort i put in to avoid the haram mm. yeah so allah give me barakah in what i've done that's my yeah. thought process you yeah. know yeah that's my thought process as but opposed just, to yeah. Sorry, I was supposed to take in a quick route yeah, of yeah. using the haram, yeah. getting some weird success, and then at the top of my success, something happens, and I just crush myself because mm. there was no barakah in it. SubhanAllah, man. I, I read a story yesterday about the first um, lottery millionaire in the UK. Yeah. He was a Muslim. Oh, wow. And uh, that was in 1994. And oh, he wow. won uh, 17 million pounds. And that was yeah. in 1994, yeah? So it was... That's probably like 30 million today, yeah? That's um, yeah. So he won that, and basically since then, his life just went fully downhill. Like, oh, it's Lord. mad what happened to him, yeah? Lord. Allah yarham, because he just died. That's why the article was written. Mm. But, man, he didn't die in a good state, let's just say that. So, um, yeah, if you take the right means to, like, obviously, he got wealth, yeah? But the thing is, how did he get the wealth? And mm. so, same with any progress. If you did something haram to get your you know supposedly positive message out to millions then yeah. it, what's like what's the point in the end kind of thing yeah um but i just wanted to make a point of this generally and yeah, not about this website when you're reacting to something you're often gonna fall into pit like mistakes or you're gonna trip up in some way or another right because let's say yeah uh, non-muslims think i don't know give me some some i don't know like let's say for example yeah Muslims, the pe- some people think that Muslims worship the moon. Yeah, uh, oh, it's yeah, like man. a, it's like a. I don't know. Is it more of an older kind of myth? I'm not sure. I don't think people even go that far now. Okay, mm-hmm. but anyway, I think maybe it's more like 90s or 80s kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, they used to, and a lot of Christians say this, and they say like Muslims don't worship God; they worship the moon and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. anyway, imagine, yeah, we're trying to like me and you. We got this podcast, and we're gonna try and counter this narrative that muslims worship the moon yeah we might this is the metaphorically what we might end up doing is we don't worship the moon so much yeah 
that I'm going to worship the sun instead just to prove <laughs> That yeah, I don't worship the moon. Point. That's that's like what some people end up doing. So yeah. whenever you're reacting to a situation, a circumstances of the world or of your community, yeah, I think you always got to watch out that you don't go the other way, in it. Yeah. Okay. So what's your opinion on like? Um, <laughs> what's your opinion on these free hug things where they blindfold themselves and uh, <laughs> and then open arms wide? Because that's the biggest form of reactionary response I've seen. Boy, that's cheesy, man. <laughs> so yeah, to anyone who doesn't know. People will blindfold themselves with a sign after like a terrible event or something that mm. that is linked to Muslims. They yeah. will get on the get, get in a public space, blindfold themselves, have a little placard that says "Free hugs." You know, we're Muslims. Do you trust me? Blah blah blah. And yeah. then they'll just get random people coming up and hugging them, and they film yeah. it, and it, you know, and it'll be like, "Oh, look at Muslims. We're so peaceful, and we're hugging each other." And yeah, <sighs> dude, yeah. dude, I've never seen anyone else do that. You know. Yeah, I've never seen it's any pretty other community low. have to do that, but you know, it's pretty to, what, low, to what extent? Bro. To what extent, bro? And it catches yeah. on. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think it's. Did I it, think really. it's maybe tasteless. I do. What do you think about the roses one? Because I've seen people giving out roses. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's necessary, but mm. I thought, well, if you're going to do something, then giving gifts to people is cool, you know. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think uh, it's kind of what we we're saying right at the beginning of yeah. um, reaching a small group of people deeply. Yeah. And I think giving a rose to someone, although it's a good gesture, no doubt, is yeah. a bit, um, what's the word, superficial. Yeah. You know, it's like I spent 50p or a pound or whatever it is to get this rose. I'm going to give you this rose. Uh, oh, yeah. Definitely, you must know that I'm Muslim and I'm giving you this rose. And like, yeah. sign this contract that you know I'm Muslim and I'll yeah. give you the rose. You know, it's like a bit yeah. over Post the top. Post for the camera. Post for the camera, too. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, uh, you know, it's it, it's it's not something you could say is wrong per se, but yeah. I feel like if if you just treated like your colleagues well and like yeah. you were proud of your Islam in front of them and you were a good person, that would go a lot further. That's what true, I think. True, true, true. Well, I mean, we've been going for an hour now. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're going to keep it an hour-ish around yeah. this time. Yeah. Do you have great. anything you want to wrap up this topic? I know we haven't hit all the lists, but yeah. we have. You know, we've we've actually let things flow quite nicely. Yeah. Definitely. What is your like conclusive thoughts about Muslim media? Um, I think it's like what we the the initial thought that we we came to this topic from was like Muslims, uh, you should own the narrative because it's easy to now, especially yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do kind of try and tell your own story, just uh, you know keep it halal, keep it like authentic. Yeah. Um, maybe don't worry about the numbers too much. Just yeah. ma- wonder, like, worry about how deep you're get- going on people. Mm. And uh, you know, like you said, like if um, if you do it the proper way, it, part of it is like it, the challenge is fun, and part yeah. of it is like Allah will put barakah in it if it's if you're doing it the right way. And even yeah, if you're yeah. struggling to do it the right way, like you know. And obviously, the general point is like Muslims often have been in the fields of like engineering medicine yeah. and so it's very useful to the world and to the ummah if you if you branch out as well into oh, of these course, kind of things of course Where, everyone's good at something you know so why not why not and mm. like to, for me to conclude i want to like yeah just talk to i'm going to talk to pessimists yeah mm. um like okay you can knock a muslim for doing something media related like a vlog or a or a you know anything like a day in the life or any sort of initiative but when you're not watching that Muslim, you're probably watching someone else. Mm. When you want entertainment, because at the end of the day, I, d- I doubt that everyone who knocks these people doesn't consume entertainment in some way. It's yeah. very difficult to get away. Whether it's a book or whether it's you know as halal or haram as one person is going to get, they're going to consume something from someone. you know. And I feel mm. like a lot of people will happily consume it from a non-Muslim where it might have more haram elements in it than a Muslim who actually is trying his best not to put anything dodgy in it you know yeah and at the end of the day like uh to quote uh the what's that pod, um freshly grounded because i was listening to that the other day yeah he's he he uh faisal chowdhury's uh goal he said was to with his podcast he said that just to get one person away from music and to listen to this instead yeah on their way to school or work he said that's enough for me like i just want to do that like if i can get that that means something to me not that he's framing his whole thing as a dawa thing but just that you know is a, is a means of reward you know and i think that, that is a really cool like 
idea that can be spread to anything. So yeah. like, like if imagine your subscription box one day mm. is just all Muslims, not because you hate non-Muslims, not like, like that, but you're getting what you want from Muslims, whether yeah. it's, you know what I mean, whether it's entertainment yeah. Or whether it's you know factual knowledge, or whether it's a history lesson, or whether it's a mo- you know, mo- it doesn't have to be deen related. Of course, your deen is always going to come from Muslims. But you know, if it was something outside of immediate yeah. deen, then yeah, yeah, sure. If I want to learn how to cook like you know chicken katsu curry or something, mm. yeah, bro, I want like Ahmed the, the the cook to show me, bro. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because I know he's going to use halal food and halal ingredients, and he's not going to lace it with bacon. <laughs> Oh, for real, but, yeah, and, but not just not just for that reason, but because it's sick as well, and we don't yeah. have to. We we shouldn't. Like the thing is, yeah, this is one thing I just want to add to what you said, which don't is correct. like what Faisal said is sick as well because he's like he's like going narrow and deep. Yeah? yeah, even in even in his objective, he's going narrow and deep. Cool. But um, just because you're Muslim, it doesn't mean that you deserve people's support, right? From Muslims, yeah. right? So it has to be good. And do it the halal way, but it's got to be sick. Like, let's be real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But only good media gets consumed, bro. Eventually, like only good yeah, media gets true, successful. Yeah, yeah. And like, this is just part of the filtering process. So, yeah. Okay, man. All right. Achi tweet. Thanks well, for your time with me today. Thank you for your time, guys. Thanks for listening. It's been Aki tweet and Amin, and we'll probably do, try and do this weekly. We'll see what happens. It's just like we're getting we're getting the feel of things. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, inshallah keep listening and send us I mean I'm, I'm easy to access I mean where are you are you on uh, anything at the moment Facebook do you, do just, you just YouTube open? just YouTube uh, YouTube alright yeah Sarah Masters YouTube okay yeah. hit up I mean if you ever have anything to say any questions or anything I'm pretty you can find me anywhere just google AkiTweet and you'll find me on things um, yeah. if you want anything because I think we want to start taking questions and things for future episodes or any sort of community input so yeah, hit us up good. inshallah We'll uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.